Easter. Today is the day that the Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Welcome as we gather again to Walkersville United Methodist Church on this Easter Sunday. What a grand and glorious day it is that we come to worship our Lord. And on this day of all days, Easter Sunday, it's just great that we can come and gather Uh, even in this way that we have been gathering now for for five weeks in this very unique kind of way we've been gathering. But there's no stopping us celebrating uh, the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you came and joined us uh, in this time of worship and this celebrating on this very special day in the, the lives of all of us who are believers. I just want to remind you to keep watching out for emails, uh, those of you in the the congregation, for information. We will keep sending out information that needs to come out and reminders and various other things that are going on. So just keep checking your emails, uh, and hopefully this has been a good source for you and us to be connected in this time. Let us begin our worship with an opening prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, We come before you this day, this Easter Sunday, to thank you for all that you have done for us, and especially for you sending your son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. Lord, and he came with the the understanding that he would face that cross, but that would not be the end of the story. Lord, we have gone through those uh, things of Holy Week, of Palm and Passion Sunday, and Monday Thursday, where Jesus and the disciples were gathered in that upper room, and uh, Judas betraying uh, Jesus, and Peter denying him, and we have gone through that dark day where Jesus suffered and died on that rugged cross, and we have gone beyond that. And now we are here to worship and to celebrate that you raised him from the dead. Alleluia, he is risen. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for his willingness to do that for us, for everyone who accepts uh, that sacrifice, who seeks our forgiveness of our sins from you, 
and that we then have the hope and the promise of eternal life. So we come today celebrating that, and we come together every time to worship and to praise you. And we bring all of these things before you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Our call to worship today is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 24. And I invite you to read this along with me. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There are joyous songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me sorely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected have become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's time for our children's message. <clears throat> so to begin with, I want to share a, a children's riddle or a children's rhyme that I learned as I was growing up. I don't know if it, you still do it or not, but um, I, you put your hands together like this. You, you fold your fingers in, and you pull your hands together. And um, the, the little rhyme is, here is the church, here is the steeple, and you see your thumbs are the doors. Open the doors, and there's all the people. So that's kind of neat. Well, then the other part of it is, you put your hands together again, fold your fingers down, almost like you're getting ready to pray, and you do the same thing. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors, and where's all the people? Oh, no, there isn't anybody in church. Well, we know that we've been doing this for the last five weeks, and it will continue on for some time. We, at this point, we know exactly when we'll be able to gather, but the church has been empty. And uh, since we've been uh, doing these services online, Mr. John and I have been the only ones in the sanctuary. So the church is empty. But yet in my mind, I try to imagine you sitting there in your pews. Now, that's a little difficult sometimes because since we have three services normally, there are sometimes pews that are, are being shared by different people at different times, but yet that helps encourage me because it's otherwise it's very strange talking to an empty church. Mr. John gets to hear me, but, you know, other than, than he and I, there's no one here. Now, the reason I'm talking about that is because this day, Easter Sunday, Besides having the Easter money stop by and visit, if, if that's your thing, and that's great. But the thing about our faith is the key thing that happened that day when the, the people went early in the morning, they saw an empty tomb. So that's a great thing because that reminded them, or they had to be told in some cases, that Jesus wasn't there because he was alive. So being empty isn't a bad thing always. And even in our times here at church, when, when the church building is empty, I know that there are a lot of you watching these uh, recordings and watching these services in your homes, wherever you may be. And so we aren't empty in that respect. We are all gathered together as one, and we worship and praise the Lord. But I just thought of this little children's rhyme kind of thing, and I thought it was a neat thing to kind of make that illustration and make that point that there are times when things are empty, and, and that's okay. Now, trust me, I will be excited when we can all come together and worship again. As a matter of fact, I'm already thinking about when we're allowed to come back together, that at least here at Walkersville Church, United Methodist Church, 
that we will come together for one service, a unity service, and we will celebrate communion, and then we have a meal afterwards. And I think what great celebration and rejoicing that will be, we will get to see each other, be together from all of this time being apart. So I look forward to that, and hopefully you do too, and we'll give you more information on that uh, as that time comes along. But for now, we are here and we are celebrating and so just remember, again, uh, if you want to practice this, is first, this is the church, this is the steeple, open the doors, and there's all the people. And the other part is, this is the church, this is the steeple, open the doors, and where are all the people? We are the people of God, and so we are still around and, and living and doing what we can and helping others even in these very unique times. So thanks for coming and sharing and being a part of the children's message. So, so let's do our prayer that we normally do. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and showing me how to love others. Amen. God bless. <laughs>
Now we move into our joys and our concerns. And as usual, those who are celebrating birthdays and those celebrating anniversaries, congratulations to you um, as you celebrate those special events in your lives. Uh, sharing the uh, joys and concerns that I have, we need to remember um, Jim Stahl's uh, mother, Shirley, passed away last week, as did uh, Megan Mullins' aunt Lisa pass away last week. So we need to keep those families in our prayers and ask the Lord to comfort them during this time uh, in their lives. Also, Donna Swanson's niece, Brenda, had liver transplant surgery on Friday. We pray that is going well, and we pray for a, a speedy recovery, uh, and there be no complications for that situation. Also, we continue to lift up those uh, who we are calling on the front line, uh, those who put themselves in harm's way uh, to be there for the, the patients and for other folks as well, but also those who are in grocery stores and, and all of those things. And I appreciate John ringing the bell all last week, Holy Week at 7 o'clock, um, and to, to honor those people. There's a, a mass of people, a lot of people who are doing extraordinary things um, and, and not being able to, to shelter at home and, and be at home, but they are out there so the rest of us um, can be safe. But uh, continue to do what we are told to do and, and the, the social distancing and all of those things. But we need to just lift those folks up in prayer as well. And also for all of the folks who are dealing with health concerns, we know there are various folks in our congregation who are dealing with cancer, and other health concerns, so we need to lift them up in our prayers. Those who have become unemployed uh, because of this coronavirus situation, but maybe it's happened even before this came around. And also just we need to lift up the uncertainties of life. There are so many things that we have never experienced before, but because of this situation, we now have a, a different parameter, if you will, a, a different kind of reality that we're all going through and that we adjust. And we need to lift up those who have special challenges where uh, there may be an, an anxiousness all the time, and this kind of thing has just elevated that anxiousness. Uh, so there are just all of those kinds of concerns. But also there are great joys and celebrations their life goes on with its pleasures and its joys. Look around, and this time of year is, to me, one of the most beautiful time of years with all of the flowers in bloom and the, and the trees and the, and the bushes. Um, for those of you who have allergies, I'm sorry, maybe it's not the best season for you, um, but I just enjoy all of the beauty. And after a, a winter where things have all kind of died down and hibernated, now we have all this beauty. And there's just so many things to celebrate and rejoice. Even today, uh, probably most of us won't be gathering with our families like we normally do. But their Easter celebration will continue. So there are indeed great joys to celebrate as well as concerns and, and things that we need to be uh, concerned about for ourselves and for others. So with this in mind, let us then turn to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for loving us 
and how that love is expressed in countless ways. We see it in nature. We see it through the smile, through the, a, 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 a gentle just nod of the head or uh, whatever it may be. But Lord, we thank you uh, that there is love and concern and compassion and those things don't get canceled. Those things don't get postponed. Lord, we do lift up those who are hurting this day. This Easter Sunday, there are those whose loved ones have passed away, either from the coronavirus or from other causes. Lord, be with them. Comfort them. Give them a peace, uh, even in this difficult times that they are experiencing. Lord, we pray that um, Brenda's surgery has gone well and that she is now on the mend. And for others who have situations that are going on in their lives, we just ask for your, your healing touch to be upon them as well. And Lord, for all who are out there um, helping us get through these times, uh, we, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the leadership um, of Governor Hogan and others in this particular state and how they have been just on top of things from the very beginning. We may not always like the decisions they have to make, and they are tough decisions, but they know that they, these things are for our good and for our safety. So we thank you for them and for them uh, working with uh, national leaders and, and with the president and, and others as well. Lord, continue to guide us and direct us of how we are to be and to do and to serve. We can still do lots of things, even when we have to be apart. We can ask someone if their lawn needs to be mowed, or we can just help out in various ways. So, Lord, we just thank you for your love and your grace and how that is expressed uh, in so many ways and, and each and every day. You give us brand new hope, brand new uh, outlook, of our lives each and every day, and we thank you for that. We bring them all of these things before you, in Jesus' precious and holy name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we move into our uh, gospel lesson for today. It's taken from Matthew, the 28th chapter, the first 10 verses. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. He came, they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. My message today is entitled, the empty tomb, a glorious sign of Easter. On that very first Easter, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene and another Mary arrived at the tomb. Now, they were going to properly take care of Jesus' body that was not able to be done 
because the Sabbath had come after Jesus had died. And so he was hastily put in uh, this tomb. So they came and they didn't know how they would roll the stone away that was in the entrance. But when they got to that place, they discovered that not only was the stone rolled away, but that the tomb was empty. And this was a confusing sight for them because they, Mary Magdalene and a few others, saw Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus lay Jesus' body in that tomb three days earlier. They witnessed Joseph rolling a big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb. So Mary Magdalene was fearful that someone had taken Jesus' body and placed it who knows where. But the question was, why would they have moved Jesus' body? Who did that? What did they do with Jesus? Now, Jesus had told the disciples and the faithful followers who followed him throughout his earthly ministry numerous times throughout his ministry that all of this would take place to fulfill scriptures. But the disciples didn't grasp what Jesus was talking about, what he meant at that, those times. But yet early on that first Easter morning, the women were focused on one thing and one thing only, and that was to go to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body uh, properly, as was their custom. And as I said earlier, this wasn't allowed to be done on that Friday because Sabbath was quickly approaching, and absolutely no work was to be allowed to be done on the Sabbath, not even preparing the body of a, a loved one for burial. According to the Matthew, and as he records, there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And then he says to, to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he was laid. So with that, it's easy to understand the women's confusion and their fear. Again, they witnessed Jesus dying on the cross and they witnessed his body being placed in the tomb. So emotions were all over the place, just as when we lose a loved one to, to death. There was sorrow, there was grief, there was fear and anguish and bewilderment for these two because they came to perform a grim but a necessary task, never imagining finding an empty tomb. Now, one thing I like to share, and I'm sure that I've shared it here already, but I know I've shared it throughout my ministry, and I think it's a key thing for us to be reminded of the stone in the entrance of the tomb was not rolled away to allow Jesus out. The stone was rolled away so that others could look in and then go into the tomb to see that it indeed was empty. We're told the only things that were remaining inside were the linens that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. So for these women and for disciples, whatever uh, accounts you read in the Gospels, but when they were there that morning, the tomb was indeed a confusing and curious sign and sight for them. But for us, today, two centuries later, the empty tomb is a glorious sign of Easter and of our faith. For the empty tomb means Jesus was raised from the dead, just as had been prophesied. Just as Jesus' birth was prophesied, so was his death and the, the anguish he would go through, and also that God would raise him three days later. So here the empty tomb means that Jesus was raised from the dead. Those prophecies had been fulfilled. 
the grave could not contain Jesus for very long. At this point, the cross was empty. The tomb was empty. Because our Redeemer lives. Christ our Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Therefore, our hearts are filled to overflowing with gratitude and love and joy and hope and peace. And as 1 Corinthians 13 says, and the greatest of these is love. God's love for us and our love for him and our love for others. As I said earlier, during our joys and concerns, God's love can't be canceled. God's love cannot be postponed. It is there for the taking. All we have to do is receive it. But at this point, the silence of the grave had been broken. The tomb was empty. Going back to the Matthew account, we see that the two Marys encountered this angel. And after he reassured them that Jesus was alive, he told them to go quickly to the disciples, to Jesus' disciples. And so they did. They hurried away from the tomb. But we were told that they were afraid, yet filled with joy as they ran to the disciples. So even though they still had some fear, they were still kind of getting used to what the angel had said. So there was still some fear, but also we are told that they were filled with joy. They couldn't wait to spread the good news that Jesus was alive. But then we're told on their way to go tell the disciples that suddenly Jesus met them and greeted them. Well, they, they fell on their knees. They clasped his feet and worshiped him. So just imagine the total elation that they were now experiencing. Here they were going to do this, this task of preparing Jesus' body. They get there. The tomb is empty. The angel talks to them, reassures them that Jesus is alive. They've gone through all of these emotions. They are excited. They are ecstatic. And then on top of that, They, at least according to this account, are the first ones to see the risen, the resurrected Jesus. That just kind of almost blows my mind to think of that uh, excitement that they had to have. Their sorrow, their, their confusion, their fear was turned into jubilant rejoicing and, and celebrating. Well, let me share another perspective about the significance of the empty tomb. Uh, It's from this book, uh, Illustrations Unlimited, and it's entitled Beyond the Cross, and it's written by LaVon Brown. Every year, thousands of people climb a mountain in the Italian Alps, passing the stations of the cross to stand at an outdoor crucifix. One tourist noticed a little trail that led beyond the cross. He fought through the rough thicket and to his surprise came upon another shrine, a shrine that symbolized the empty tomb. It was neglected. The brush had grown up around it. Almost everyone had gone as far as the cross, but there they stopped. Far too many have gotten to the cross and have known the despair and the heartbreak. Far too few have moved beyond the cross to find the real message of Easter. That is the message of the empty tomb. I just enjoy that that message, that story, and it's a power thing. The significance of the empty tomb. We celebrate with alleluias. And all men's because the tomb was empty. So neither stone nor any object nor the guards posted at the grave nor anyone on earth was or is able to get in the way of God's plan for Jesus. 
not even this uh, COVID-19 virus, as devastating as it is, and the disruption it is causing, that can't take away the joy of us who know and understand and who believe uh, that Jesus is risen on this day. Yes, families aren't able to gather as they normally would and celebrate their normal traditions. Our family has already decided that we will indeed have Easter celebration and we will have the egg hunt and all of those things we normally do. It just won't be today. Uh, we're not sure when it will be at this point. But you know, there's this saying that's been going around for years. There's Christmas in July. Well, why not Easter in July? Or whenever it may come around. But we will celebrate. And hopefully you do as well. We cannot do it today. But we will celebrate that. Uh, Easter and all that that means. It may be a, a hot summer's day, we don't know, but we will gather and celebrate. But in the meantime, I want us to remember that nothing, absolutely nothing, can steal our joy in celebrating the fact that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, lives that's why we gather together on Sundays or whenever we come together for worship. They are called little Easter's. We are celebrating that we serve, we believe in a risen, living Savior. And we will, we will eventually be able to gather in our churches to worship together again once more. That will happen. But you know, Another thought that came as I was preparing my message, sadly, there will always be some people who will deny, who don't believe, or simply don't care about Jesus' triumphal victory over sin and death. But it happened. It is real. And we, there it is recorded in the Bible that there were many people who witnessed Jesus alive and walking on earth until he ascended back into heaven and now is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. So to me, the empty tomb is even more powerful than the empty cross. The empty cross is powerful in itself, but the empty tomb is indeed a glorious sign of Easter and of our faith. It gives a completeness, a wholeness to our Christian faith. It is the celebration of today, Resurrection Sunday. Jesus' birth was important and necessary in order for him to carry out God's will. But our faith is so much more than just two days of the year, Jesus' birth and his resurrection. Last Sunday's message title was From Cheers to Jeers. And I mentioned then that the story wasn't finished. The circle was not yet complete. That the cheers of Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, we know turned into the jeers eventually of Good Friday. And But we have now traveled through all of those things, and we are coming full circle to the cheers and the celebration of Easter. Again, I just can't contain myself to say that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And that completes the circle. But yet, the circle of life is unending for those who believe. For there is eternal life. We go from this life to eternal life. We sing praises today and for all eternity. Because God also promises that Jesus will return. And Jesus made that promise. He will return to earth again for all believers. So that's what makes our faith different from others. The empty tomb is a glorious sign of Easter. But even so, it is part of our faith journey. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter. Amen. So as this service comes to an end, our celebration continues, not just today, but always. But understand and know that God loves us with all of his being, that we celebrate 
and we worship a risen, living Savior. Go in his peace and his grace today and always. Amen and amen.